What's up everyone, this is John from North Claiborne Group and welcome to my channel, Restless Riches, where we talk about real estate and personal finance. In this video, we're gonna be discussing if the real estate housing market is going to crash. With the recent plunge in the stock market, investors are worried sick. And this includes investors that specialize in the real estate housing market. So many things are burdening the housing market that real estate investors are practically pulling their hair out. With a looming recession, millions of unemployed, and businesses unable to open and generate cash flow, there will undoubtedly be an effect on the housing market. This effect will either be mild and will quickly get back to normal, or become severe enough to cause a crash, depending on a variety of factors. Factor number one, coronavirus. This is the obvious one. This has been one of the largest viruses in history to infect multiple countries throughout the world. Besides being a major health problem, it has wreaked havoc on our economies. The United States, European, and Asian stock markets have fallen severely. With the stock markets crashing, many people believe it's just a matter of time before the real estate market follows suit. Now, when businesses have no business and workers have no work, and obviously then there's no income, how do you cover your mortgage and rent? So while the government has passed a stimulus bill to help out the unemployed, this is a little uneven because a $1,200 check goes a lot farther in say Alabama than a higher priced area such as New York City or Los Angeles. So people that are living in these higher priced areas are gonna feel it a lot more than people in other areas. Now this is not even taken into consideration other expenses and bills that may be disproportionately higher in different areas. Factor number two is interest rates. The good news is interest rates are still at historic lows. The bad news of that is that the government can't lower them anymore to stimulate buying. So it's easy for you to get money, uh, but there's not much that the Fed can do to prop up the market, uh, unless if they go negative, but that's not ideal either. Although it is an interesting concept. Hmm, if I got a loan for 100,000 and only had to pay back 95,000, Kind of interesting, huh? Factor three, the bubble bursting. An asset bubble happens when markets rise in price in a short period of time and the value of the item doesn't support it. The prices of homes have skyrocketed from the early 2010s up until recently when the coronavirus has started. So this could be the pin that pops the bubble and brings prices on a downward trajectory. Factor number four, the tax reform plans. This recently passed law capped the amount that homeowners could deduct. While this was mainly aimed at pricier properties, this could have a ripple effect down as buyers are now more cautious without this extra benefit. This lack of benefit becomes even more pronounced in a weakened economy. Factor number five is biting off more than you can chew. Many Americans are spreading themselves too thin because while it's recommended that you save three to six months worth of expenditures, just in case of an emergency like now, most Americans do not. In fact, studies have shown that 40% or more of Americans would not be able to handle a $400 emergency bill. Think about that. That's a big problem. Taking that into consideration, it's no surprise that many Americans are wondering where they're gonna get the money for their next rent or mortgage payment. Now, fortunately, Congress has passed the stimulus bill, which gives over 90% of Americans a $1,200 check. Um, and then maybe some other benefits depending on their situation. Uh, but the worry here is that if they were mismanaging their money before and now you give them this big check, what's to stop them from just like splurging and balling out and not putting it towards the necessities that they should. I've learned sometimes old dogs don't learn new tricks. Hopefully the shock of this crisis will force people to change their financial habits. Uh, but unfortunately, some people will revert to their old ways and spend poorly, which is going to cause foreclosures and evictions once restrictions are lifted. Factor number six, inverted U.S. Treasury yield curve. A major sign of a market crash is when the U.S. Treasury yield curve inverts. This is when interest rates of short-term Treasury become higher than long-term yields. Now, what does this mean for the market? When the yield curve inverts, it means that investors believe that the future is not looking so good. In the past, when the yield has curved, 
has indicated a recession in the market. Not always, but most of the times, and this time it got us. While the number of stay at home orders has ground real estate activity to a halt, and there may be some corresponding drop in prices, I don't think it's gonna be anywhere near what it was in 2008. And once those restrictions are lifted, there will be a lot of pent up demand and the market will go back to normal. The difference is the economy and specifically the stock market uh, was fine, albeit a little bit expensive before all this happened. Things were pretty much humming along and it was just ground to a straight halt. Instead of, you know, like in a normal uh, economic downturn where people are laid off and lose some income or businesses don't make as much money. I mean, here everything just went from record levels to zero so quickly that obviously the effects are very sharp and pronounced. But once things start turning the corner, I mean, we have the potential to rebound very quickly. If we are in an extended shutdown, then the recovery is going to be more painful and slower. Uh, no one's going to be happy about that except possibly Amazon and Netflix because when I walk down the street, that's all I see is Amazon deliveries and people watching Netflix. So in conclusion, with the recent stock market crash, many are holding on to their seats when it comes to the housing market. There is hope that if the curve is flattened enough and the steps that the government is taking to insulate the economy actually work, that we'll be able to rebound quickly in more of a V-shaped recovery. If this happens, the housing market may suffer in the short term, but get back to normal by the next spring market, if not sooner. And of course, this could all change if we get significant good or bad news, i.e. a vaccine is developed that works. I obviously would have a great effect on the market. Keep in mind that I'm just a guy on the internet stating my opinion based on my own information. So before you make any decision, make sure to do your own research and due diligence. Don't just go selling all your assets based on what you hear on YouTube. Check in with your local real estate agent to know the real estate market news that affects your own market. Also, another super important thing to check that some people forget about but is absolutely critical is to check that you smash that like button because it's important for the YouTube algorithm to stay happy. Also, make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you're aware of all the future content. Be sure to add me on Instagram at Restless Riches. And if you have any comments about anything in this video or anything I might have forgotten, please write them below and I'll get back to you. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you on the next one.